Yo, what's going on? It's Youngblood. I just did an interview on uh, the Zach Sang Show and we talked about everything from the beginning to the new album. So many secrets got revealed. So make sure you tune in. Love ya. <laughs> Yo, beautiful human. We're going to talk to Youngblood in just a sec. But first, I want to talk to you about hair and Manscaped. We all have hair and it needs to be trimmed. It needs to be cleaned. It needs to be kept. And Manscaped does it. Look at these products. They're glorious. They're beautiful. And they've instilled me with a newfound confidence and coolness and cleanliness that I genuinely didn't have. Honestly, shaving before was a nightmare. It made me uncomfortable. I hated it. And then this thing entered my life, the lawnmower 4.0. Super soft. Really nice. Reduces nicks. Reduces ingrown hairs. I just love it. I, I honestly enjoy shaving now. And there's a spotlight on there. Precision. And all the other stuff. This stuff makes me feel super clean and smell good. The lotions bring me joy. And they got the weed whacker. I'm telling you, try out Manscaped if you got hair and you want to keep that hair trim and clean. It's worth it. And I'll give you 20% off. Just use Zach Sang when you check out. Manscaped.com. Zach Sang at checkout. You'll save 20%. You're going to like it, I promise. You're welcome. Here's Dom. BDE. BD. Big desk energy. By the way, hello, beautiful human. My name hello. is Zach. That is Dan, and we welcome to the studio Young Buck. Hey. Hello! I'm so happy to be back. It's been a long time. Yeah. And a lot of growth and a lot of life between our last hang in today. I know, wild. Do you remember things vividly or do you remember things like sporadically? How do you look back at time? I just think like I I can't really believe it you know what i mean i think you kind of gear yourself up for a journey that you really want and dream of and then you kind of get on the roller coaster it's literally that you're in line at disneyland for a roller coaster and then you're like yes i can't wait to be on this ride and then you get on the ride and you and the ride ends and you're like what just happened does the, yeah did the ride you know ever I mean? did, did it ever end though because i feel like no i know it's not ended but i'm just like you're on the ride and then you kind of for example, say like the ride takes a break and then you're on to the next ride and onto the, you kind of just go yeah. like, what the hell just happened? It just goes so fast. Yeah, it just goes so fast and you're just like, whoa. Forward, 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 forward. Forward all the time. We're entering into a new era. We have an album that's coming. Yeah. September 2nd. Yeah. We're going to put a link in the description, pre-save it or grab, grab it now. The link will be updated <laughs> whenever you're watching this. But is growth between when we first met back in 2019 reflected in the music you're putting out today absolutely i think i think kind of like everything like i think you knew me when i really just started out and i think like in that period of my life people i wanted to start young blood because all my life i felt terrified just to be myself yeah uh, you know what i mean where i came from i felt really like judged for being completely myself unfiltered and it really got gave me a lot of pain and my first record was like hello is there anyone out there like me and as the journey evolves i always just wanted to tell the truth songs and albums and records whatever are, are feelings for me i put I, like, I take a little cup and i put my feeling in it and then i give it to the world because if if I'm doing the same thing as I did last time, then I'm lying. You know what I mean? It's not truthful. So absolutely this album is reflective of kind of the 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 past couple of years and 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 it's very personal, you know. What I mean I really feel like for the first time ever I can be like really go deep into my life and, and my feelings. Do you only feel like you can go there because you found people that absolutely. are just like you? Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's the reason I think like oh, the fir the first record was like a young person talking to other people <laughs> at the crash of a wave of a generation where I genuinely believe a generation went no do you know what fuck this I want to be myself. You're talking about liability, right? Yeah, 21st yeah. century liability. Like fuck this, I want to be myself. No matter how wacky or weird or or in terms of sexuality, in terms of gender, a shift happened within a generation. A hundred percent. And and you, 
you had an email dedicated to your fans. It's like fans at youngblood.com. Yeah. Because you wanted people to reach out. Literally. Like, literally. And that was it. I was literally there. Honestly. You know what I mean? A lot of people can say this and, and like talk bullshit on it, but I just wanted to find some mates. <laughs> I, I know, totally so, I get it. Do you know what I mean? I just was like, yeah. I just want to be like, I wanted to be in like a gang <laughs> and like find a clan and like belong somewhere. It's a community. A community. Yeah, fully because I, I would like I'd look at Green Day and I'd look at My Chem and I'd look at like Oasis even and the Sex Pistols and the Clash and Lady Gaga and David Bowie and like they like I was like if they can build a, a community by just telling the uncensored complete truth, then I think I can do that too. And by kind of doing that, I think there was like a. Within music, it was all like, oh my God, I love you, I'm going to shit myself. And like nothing was saying anything about like anxiety, depression, sexuality, gender, Brexit in the UK, yeah. the Republican Party in America. Like young people like starting to kind of go like, whoa, the tool of social media can actually obtain me ears and respect and... And I and, and and allow me to get my ideas across. Is all of that connected to the definition of what a rock star is? <sighs> I mean, I think to be honest, like I don't. I, I almost kind of want. I, I never really wanted to be a rock star. I just kind of they put you get put in that position when it's like really. I'm like I do, don't really want to have that pedestal. I think Youngblood. I want to be the fucking antithesis of a fucking pedestal. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, with it, I always say this, and I think kind of coming up to the third record and calling it Youngblood, it's like, if you want if you want to understand what Youngblood is, don't just watch me. Watch them. Look, look at, at the generation. Them. Look at the people. Yeah, yeah look at the... Yeah, that's yeah. it. Like, if you come to a show, the show is not just what's happening on stage. It's what's happening in the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's like... I just wanted a place where like people could meet each other in the line and find some friends. <laughs> You've done that. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. And it's just like and and it and it just I think like it just ignited. And it was like I do believe like great art. <laughs> Let me get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but but yeah, totally, great art comes in a quest for connectivity and companionship. Fully, I, I couldn't believe in that anymore. Uh, like, you, like you're celebrating five years, by the way, of performing. So crazy. It's so weird. It's like when you say five years, cause it's like that's mental. That's like mental. That's like whoa. That's five years. Do you remember the first time you hit a stage? Uh, yeah, no one was there except my mom. <laughs> Sick, dude. I remember <laughs> my mom and my producer. My producer Matt. He always tells his story. It's like this Israeli guy who's very Israeli. So he speaks like this. You know what I mean? Very like crazy. And he's like this Israeli guy, and he's like, he walked out on the stage, and he goes, okay. "There's no one there except me and his mother." And he's like, "What the fuck, London?" Yeah, <laughs> and he's just like, "This like apparently he always says it's like there's two people at the bar who are just like whoa," <laughs> and then he's like, "I see him two years later walk out to Brixton Academy and to five thousand people, and he's like, London in the same way." And he's like, "Oh my god," that's how he says it, and he's like, "Weird." You you got to know him to like if you knew him you would be cracking up right now. Love you, Matty. By the way, you know what I mean. And he's just like, I just wanted to play a big crowd I, I i think the thing about it is what i dreamed of and then what actually happened what actually happened was so much more beautiful and had so much more substance to what you dream of yeah because you see it so surface level all you want to do is be in a pair of leather pants playing to ten thousand people <laughs> like <laughs> freddie or mick or whatever but you don't realize how beautiful and turbulent and crazy the journey actually is until you w you're in it and i feel so lucky to kind of have done this because i feel like this journey has been quite unique because i didn't have to it was all about us and all about an idea instead of like oh my god that hit record you know what i mean it was never about like it still isn't you know what i mean and that's why sometimes i have to f like fight with kind of an industry that is built on an idea of like what song do you sing mm -hmm. instead of what do you fucking represent mm -hmm. and what does your like i don't know movement or culture represent as opposed to like oh what song 
what what song do you sing? It's such a vapid answer that I think like it's such a trip to me because as a mu- I, I don't even see myself as a musician first. What do you see yourself like, as? Like someone who just needed to communicate. <laughs> Like, was just like, ah, I need to talk to somebody <laughs> because, like, n- like no one understands me for who I truly am. It's like, oh, yo, you're that weird kid who puts on, like, makeup and is a bit mental. Ah, <laughs> you'll grow out of that. I'm like, fuck, will I? <laughs> I don't want to. You know what I mean? It totally. was kind of like that my, for, like, I don't know, 15 years, 16 years, 17 years. And I was like, I need to just be like, I don't even care if... The person is a, a weird 70 year old man or something like that. It was just like, oh, yo, you remind me of when I used to see The Clash or what, something like that. I was like, I just need to be able to talk to someone. When did you realize that that could be an actual vehicle for communication? Like, do you remember the first time you wrote a song? Dude, I remember going back to Ma- Matty. I came down to London at like 15, 16, tried to go to like art school for a bit, and that didn't. I thought art school would be sick because I'd be like, oh my God. It's gonna be the, like you can be who you are. Nah, it's but still I think school. School. It's still school. It's dude, still I dropped like, out of art school too. Yeah, dude, do it this way, do it that yeah. way, and you're just like, oh god, fuck. Mm-hmm. There's so many rules. And then I kind of started playing around London, trying, trying my best, and I got a little bit of kind of uh, to cut a long story short. Cause I could tell the story it could be an hour, but it's like label starts to pay attention. I was like, oh my god, and they were like, I'm gonna put you on the Voice, <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> please no no this is not going to work and you kind of get tempted by a record you know what I mean when some some someone you might get a deal and, and and in the grand scheme of things a deal don't mean fuck all you know what I mean you've got to it, the industry to me just it like everything the industry told me to do I did the opposite and ended up here that's and that's do you know what I mean yeah you but you cultivated a real movement connected to a real community of people that felt also, like they had nobody else to talk to, they felt misunderstood, they felt like they were outcasts, and they didn't have anywhere else to go. And dude, and, and like to go back to the question, when when that first moment, I remember like after after I said no to the voice, like people kind of kept in contact with me and started putting me in sessions, and everyone in that kind of first step of the industry was going, "Oh, you can't sing about politics. I'll never get played on the radio. Yo, you can't." Look. And it was, and I was just like, "Oh, oh, really? Oh, oh. and when you're like 16, I'm like. Oh, but like the clash, you know what I mean? Or oh, the clash and the Sex Pistols and my chem and and that's where I, or Green Day. Like, what about American Idiot? That was massive, and everyone's like, yeah, but that was like a long time ago. I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> and but you, when you like looking at these massive producers or whatever you're working with or writers you've met in London through people you think know what they're talking about, you kind of fall into that trap. And then I meet Matty, who I was talking about earlier. And I go down to his studio and I'm playing some songs I'd written with other people. And he's like, this is terrible. Leave. And he kicks me out of his studio. He's like, you're trying to be Ed Sheeran and Ed Sheeran does it better. And I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? It was the first yeah. person. And it kind of, I was really confused. Yeah, because he's trying to break you out of what you, That's what I'm the saying. mold that you thought I, you had to be in. Absolutely. So I'm just like, and, and that was kind of, I remember that moment. I was like, oh my God, I was so confused because... These people told me that, and these people told you that, and, and you form it years of your life. You are what you learn. Totally. You know what I mean? And then I remember I was kind of, the way I kind of am as a person. If someone, I kind of kick the bear. I always kick the bear my whole life, just like to see how far I can get. And I was like, all right, then I'm going to show you. And I remember I, at the time I was uh, literally couch surfing off my ex girlfriend Claire. I was like, thank you so much. I was literally staying in the house for free. <laughs> like earning like like working in my dad's guitar shop and earning like 20 quid in cash every day and the kind of the arrangement we'd have I was like I'd buy her a Chinese takeaway like every night or take out food <laughs> to like pay rent dinner you know I mean? for a roof yeah so that was kind of weird like Chinese food for roof basically <laughs> shout out Claire thank you for like housing me for two years and you know what I mean wow. but I remember remember that show The Get Down on Netflix Baz Luhrmann did it. It was like this, this, this Maybe. weird uh, kind of show about uh, New York in the seventies and the birth of hip hop and break. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And Grandmaster Flash and yeah, shit. And yeah, I'll never yeah, forget. Yeah, I actually don't tell this story a lot. This is so mental that that we got here. It's like I remember I sat in bed at like three p.m. at my girlfriend's house because I had nothing to do. You know what I mean? I was like. 
You know what I mean? And then I was like, right, I'm just going to put a Netflix show on because you, you've been an artist and you're trying to find inspiration, education, wherever. And I remember this beat. It was like... And it was like 10 seconds before they started doing like... Oh, like the, the... You know what I mean? The 70s yeah. rap, hip-hop mm -hmm. crew shit. In like upper... Up, upper like east side new york or where you know yeah, I mean, totally. where it was done totally and i'd always loved new york like downtown where like cbgb's was going on so to kind of find another genre at what's happening at the same time blew my mind and i remember i'd written this poem called king charles about ages ago about kind of brexit brexit had just happened and i felt like i had my voice taken away and a lot of young people felt like that too mm. And I'd written a poem about it. And my lyric was like, I admit I've never been broke, but I have been broken, shout, been silence, or searching for a token of kindness. That was the first song, I, like, first, like, a poem that I'd been kind of, had, like, drilled out of me to not be talking about. And I remember I kept rewinding this thing back and back and back. It was like, dude, dude, kill, kill. And then rewind it, like just so I could get that thing. And I was like, I admit, I've never been broke, but I have been broken, blah, blah, blah. and came up with a rhythm. And then called my manager at the time, I was like, right, get me back in with this weird Matty guy. And I was like, all right then, what about this? And we were just kind of scheming about what I liked and what I didn't like. And I was like, I love the clash. And you remember, I remember him putting, should I stay or should I go on? Da -na 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 -na. Na, 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 na. And the, the beat, and I was doing like, I got up and was going like, and he was like, whoa, that's it. And he saw my facial expression that I probably do now on stage with my guitar. Like, like <laughs> was just going mental. Because I was this energetic person that didn't have a place to run. And you had nowhere to put your energy. You know, I mean, I like, had my whole life was like sitting in a straight jacket. That's why 21st century had the straight jacket. And he just let me run. And then King Charles came out in an hour. And I remember that first moment of, yo, this is who I am. And I remember playing it to my parents and they hated it. <laughs> that's how you know. <laughs> and that's when I was like, yes, <laughs> this is it. I've done it. I've found it. And putting it out into the world. On Instagram, I had eight, like 8,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> Right, and I put it out into the world, and people started responding. It changes your life, and it just like, and I remember people just started talking back, being like, "I was like, I, I feel like that," and they were like, "And I was like, what? You fit, you relate to that?" And they're like, "Yeah." I was like, "Well, I got so much more to say in this realm of the world. I've got so much more to say here." And then, then the songs just started to come out, and kind of. As the years went on, 21st Century Liability became this kind of album for TikTok before TikTok was even there. 100%. Yeah, you, you know, hit the nail on the head. You know what I mean? It's th like that's four years old, but, but it's the most TikTokable album, re re like talking about feelings and ideas and and everything re revolving coming of age, but in a way that's not like a teen dream movie, in a way that's like... Realistic. Blood, sweat, <laughs> shit, and yeah. spit. You know what I mean? It's like fully like coming of age and like completely unfiltered. So what do you take with you from King Charles that you carry with you into this third self-titled album? I think always the honesty. It do This new album don't sound like 21st Century Liability. It sounds like... My, the, my spirit where I am now. 21st Century Liability was me in England. <laughs> it's, it just Angry? makes me nose go, ah, me. <laughs> it's got that, nah, that bratty kid like me. Uh. And I'm going to say, what if like someone who doesn't know me, what does 21st Century Liability sound like? Me. <laughs> it's almost like we were playing like with fairground toys. Like it's almost like, the instrumentation is like 808s guitars yeah, and elementary like, and like I don't know a weird keyboard that's like bing 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 it's like it's like the Joker and Hot Topic and a, an elevator and and uncensored truth and swearing and sex and you know what I mean and then weird turned into this album of finding love within from people and the idea that anger turned to love 
and I was I found Bowie and Gaga a lot more, and this idea of the individual yeah. and the the size got bigger. It was a larger than life album. It was a 21st century liability. It was a in its in its bedroom, just raw and gritty. And then Weird went, I am can be myself. And that explosion of like, oh my god, I've found a community of weirdos, and I want to <laughs> redefine what that word means. How, well, how is it defined now? I just think it's to be weird is to be beautiful, to be strange is to be amazing. You know what I mean? To 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 defy the box that you've been put in is radical. Fuck it's yeah. sick. You know what I mean? And that that's those first two albums that were almost polar opposites, and like. But they're, they're, they're the same feeling. It's kind of crazy. That one's myself on the cover of the first album, 21st Century Liability. Weird is seven versions of who I am on the cover. <laughs> and then this next record, it's almost, it's just about, it's just almost like a light, a torch got turned into a laser beam of a spirit that I, I have felt from a community. That place of, belonging that place of I'm gonna be all right I'm gonna get through and that place of I can actually go all right then take it gonna take the armor off I'm gonna pull me out at my chest go 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 and I'm gonna put it on a plate and I'm gonna give it to the world and I'm gonna be like this is who I am this is my story this is my my idea this is this is where I'm at right now there will definitely be someone else in six months as always but this is who I am right now is that why it's self-titled that's why it's self-titled I think because it's like nothing in the world makes more sense to me right now than Youngblood because initially it was going to be called you only lose when you stop getting up mm. ah but which is true by the way yeah which is true but Youngblood says that and every title I would write down everything I would write down the funeral you only lose when you stop getting up I don't feel like feeling sad today Everything Youngblood said it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that moment of it's got this happy, sad spirit and this train. Like if you listen to the funeral, memories do. Don't feel like feeling sad today. I don't want to go out. It's got this. This. I'm gonna be all right. This. I am together with my bunch of reprobates running to a. To, to charging in a battle to obtain a world of love that we all s- foresee. Empowering. Yeah, it's it's got this empowering thing because what also came with the community growing, people, like, I think when a so I always call it a subculture because I think we are, you know what I mean? Like, I know that's such well, like a... You're a club, technically, you know right? I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it grows and it grows and it grows. And then a dark thing happens. You bleed into the mainstream. And the mainstream's a scary place because our uh, natural instinct, I think, as human beings, to, su- to, to treat in something we don't understand is you turn your nose up in it and you f- try and find the holes in it and you try and pick it apart and you try and pick it to pieces. And something that was so pure it can be the the world found me. Yeah, it's a you know new I mean? level it's, of scrutiny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then it's like I'm a 15 year old kid again in school, but to 20 million, 30 million people. So how do you block that out? By a year of complete like, oh my god, what the hell? Like I I I just it was mental. It got really rough. It was like. Just even stupid, like young blood looks like he smells of piss. I hate him. What an awful person. What a blah blah blah. And then miss and 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 uh, twist, twist statements have said. And the thing about it is, all that experience was love, because it was always a community of love, and that's what it is. It will always be that. And that uh, at later I'll talk about how that love protects me now and how I kind of came out of it. But in that time. So it's so pure and beautiful and happy got attacked by uh, a world of kind of scrutiny because you get too big yeah. and people like because the thing about social media is it's anyone can have a voice and I fight for that 
but also lies and misconceptions can blow up. Oh, yeah. And it's not real. But the problem is the world perceives you by something someone else said because it got enough likes and it got enough traction. So that must be real. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. And it's such a trip because it's when you get something that we were controlling as a community and as a subculture, as a club, we were in control of, yo, I love you, man. I love you too. I'm, I, I really, I, whoever you are, you're accepted. Whoever you are, you're accepted. The control of your narrative does not become yours anymore when... You open the gate. The, when the gate gets open totally. to the world. But there is a balance, right, that you want to strike because there is a message that through mainstream success, you can touch more people. Completely. And for every piece of shit, and that, and there that could was be, it. you know, like and 100 that, great and people. And that is the very much journey I went on with this, with this record. It was like... It gave me a, a sense of fire that I needed. It gave me a, a sense of I've always wanted young blood. My dream for young blood is not to. I don't care about how many records I sell. I care about how many people I play to. That's... It's about how many people are there today for each other, like who would never be there before. Like wow, look how many people we are together. That's what really makes me go wow. That's really special. You know what I mean? And I think the only way I get that is by going into a, a complete shit fight and finding people amongst the storm, mm -hmm. going, yo, you feeling like that? And that's okay. And it's kind of beautiful because it gave me that, and it almost gave the community something to kick against. Mm -hmm. It gave us all something like, yo, look at like, w the reason why people are picking on us is because we're, of, we're something worth talking about. That's That's it. And it's like, it's like, I would never forget. I remember Ollie Sykes from Bring Me The Horizon. Yeah. Kind of a little bit of a mentor of mine now. You know what I mean? Said to, to me that it's like, and said it famously in an interview, it's like, love or hate you, it's an obsession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it becomes something. I, you know what I mean? It becomes a, becomes a talking point and it becomes a, a banner to stand behind and it becomes a, an idea. And, and I think it's kind of, it's, it's kind of beautiful and, this record is a, an, a letter to those people who stuck with me going like, I never wanted it to be a woe is me rock star story. Oh man, and that's been mean to me. You know what I mean? I'm not bothered about that. It's almost a metaphor. That hate is a metaphor to a hate that millions of people feel all over the world because they're not one thing. They're not boxed in. They're almost something. And I wanted this album to be an album for the almost somethings because i don't want to be almost something i don't want to be anything at all i want to be me you know what i mean and it's 100%. like it's like millions of people feel almost perfect millions of people feel almost that almost this almost that and i think it's it's a time for not, not to be something it's a time to be anything it's a time to be nothing <laughs> it's a time to be yourself <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. it's a time to be like yo i don't want to be that and maybe i'm that today maybe i'm not tomorrow it's just like and here you will be celebrated for it. You won't be accepted for it. No one wants to be accepted. That's so surface level. Totally. You know what I mean? It's like you don't want to be accepted by your parents. Great. You want to be adored. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you, you bring that up in tissues. Like I, I, one of my questions was, do you want to be adored? And, yeah, yeah, I think everybody wants to feel love. Everybody wants to f be adored. Uh, for sure. truly who you are. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I fucking love you for who you are. It's like, Really? If you start there, like anything's that, that's possible. That's it, and that's why I say on stage every night. I've been doing this to like, and it's getting so much bigger now. It's so sick when this happens because like ten thousand people in a room. I'm like, all right, everyone, look at each other right now. In the room, look right and left, and everyone's like, what? I'm like, yep, yeah, find a stranger, and everyone's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, look at that stranger in the face and say, I fucking love you, man, and do it. And that's what Youngblood's about. You know what I mean? It's about that. Of euphoria of yeah man I, I love you too like that one moment though like can change somebody's outlook forever that's literally it I rem like I can list so many experiences I remember watching Billy Joe play bullet in a bible at Milton Keynes mm. and he just stood there like that in his eyeliner and his tie and he just held his hand out and that changed my life <laughs> 
I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stand there, <laughs> completely chest open, and be like, this is who I am. Do you realize in the, while you're doing it that you're fulfilling a larger dream, or is it only like after and you like look at it that you can realize it's mental. it? I don't, it's mental. It's just like, I just kind of, I don't think I can. I think any time I kind of look there, it's like, whoa. You kind of get like blinded. It's like looking at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Just like, no, nope, just keep walking and you'll get there. It's like, eventually. It's like, <laughs> ah! You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you nervous to go to Robert Smith and ask for permission? Absolutely terrified. I mean, the craziest <laughs> thing about this is, right, the Robert Smith story is mental because it's the, the narrative between us is like, I have adored that artist for as long as I can remember. The androgyny, the feeling of happy, sad, the feeling of, I don't know how he, he just made me, he made me understood stand that I was anxious or melancholy, but I could get up that day. You know what I mean? It was like, it's almost like, yo, I know you're sad, I am too, but let's feel fucking great together. You know what I mean? It's like totally. he made me feel that that thing. I was like, fuck yeah, wow. And uh, I remember going to the NME Awards in the UK in 2019, and the 1975 were over there. And I love the 1975. I don't think I've said that enough. You know what I mean? I think it's so crazy. Someone like Matty Healy as, a, as, a, as a, an artist, he's like about eight, nine years older than me. And he's, he has a massive, inf he had a big influence on me in the same way that Alex Turner did. Mm. It's so, so funny because kind of sometimes like Matty and, and, and I are kind of, it's almost put next to each other. And yeah. I was like, to those artists, to <coughs> Gerard, Billy Joe, Alex Turner and Matty Healy, I'm very much like, yo, you guys are, you kind of shaped my teen years. You know what I mean? Mm. So like 75 are over there. And I don't say that enough. You know what I mean? I think as a great British musician, I like, Matty is to me what I think Tom York is to Matty. Totally. You know what I mean? They're older and they paved the way. That's, yeah, that's you know the I mean? best way to put it. And that's the best way to put it. I think like, I'm there and 75 are over there and Robert Smith's over there and I'm like, just done my first album, just played Bricks in Academy, like, like wow, I do not, I'm in that kind of like, I don't deserve to be here <laughs> kind of headspace. Like, wow, that's fucking mental. And um, I mean, yeah, I'm there, I'm just like, I brought me mum. <laughs> to the NME Awards, which That's is awesome. ba basically the naughtiest award show <laughs> in London, uh, in in the in the UK industry. You know, what I mean, it's quite naughty. It's like where every like alt band drinks whiskey and lager and like swears and f fights and slags each other off, basically. <laughs> and um, I'm there, and I brought my mum to the naughty award show. Whoa. I don't want to cough through the story because it's <laughs> sick. So I, I'm, I brought my mum to the award show, and I'm like trying to like I just keep looking I just keep seeing Robert Smith's big hair you know what I mean I'm like whoa that's crazy wow I'm just like bobbing my hair back, head back you know what I mean just to try and kind of catch it catch his eye just to be like oh like hello hello that'll do that's fine for me I'm going where's my fucking mum <laughs> where the fuck's my mum gone turn around she sat talking to Robert Smith <laughs> And I'm like, no, because she's. I'm like in my head. She's like, he's loved you his whole life, and 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 like I'm. I'm just thinking he's been like, oh god, who is this crazy woman who's like talking to me? And he's like, he loved you, like put makeup on because of you, and like, oh, thank you so much, Robert. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is she saying? So I kind of walk over to be like, you know what I mean? Babysit my mother at the enemy of Awards. I'm like, come on, mom, come back over here. And they're just chatting. I don't know what they were talking about. They might have been flirting, to be honest. You know what I mean? I'm kind of sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, down. And then, like, I kind of go over and, like, get into conversation with Robert Smith. And he's like, oh, you're from Doncaster and blah, blah, blah. And that was the first kind of time I met him. And I remember Tissues. We were in the studio, and, and it was really late. And uh, I was kind of about to call the session. You know what I mean? You've been there for five hours. A couple of ideas have come, but nothing's really, like taken because most of my songs aren't written over days they're written in a day yeah you in, know. in a couple hours it's like if this idea is coming it's worth pursuing and uh the session was just not going well so i was like oh, okay and but then i just was like for some reason we just started putting tunes on 
and just like sitting there like drinking like Bud Light and eating like chips or something. I can't remember <laughs> what exactly. And it was like I remember came on makes you feel good yeah and i'm just like whoa this is cool and matt is in the session israeli matt he's like you need to shake your ass like this and i'm like because i'm just like bam bam like doing the thing around the studio it's like whoa sexy blood and i'm like oh god he's like a meme you know what i mean it's just like i wish i could just like take videos of him and just put him up because he's like I just want to show you a picture of him soon. Yeah. Can we some can we fa- find a picture of Matty somewhere? <laughs> Sexy he's, boy. He's old, older <laughs> Israeli guy, and he's just like to anyone else in the world, they'd be like, "Oh, he's so weird." But to me, I'm I love him, and he's like, "You got to shake your ass like that, crazy." I'm like, "Okay, whoa, let's do this. Let's sample it." And then every producer's a little bit older, and every time you say sample, they just go. Because every older producer's like, we're going to lose all the publishing. And I don't yeah. give a shit. I was like, yeah, <laughs> fuck publishing. Woohoo! And they're just like, fuck. So I'm like, buy it off iTunes. We buy it off iTunes. I'm like, snip. Buy it off iTunes, put it into the session, and chop the drum beat. And everyone's like, fuck. Oh, we're going to have to give away 100% to the cure if we want to, if we even get to use it. And I don't care. I'm just like, let's just do it. It sounds good. It's fucking amazing. It's like, what, what an honor. <laughs> And then it was like, and I'm like, put me in the booth and leave it, no bass, like just like play, like I get me mate Chris to like do do do, like play like D different chords, kind of whatever. I'm like vibe out to it. And my friend Jake Tory, and he starts going on the guitar, bing 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 bing, bing and kind of does a variation of what mm. the melody ended up to be. And I'm like, that sounds like the Strokes. Whoa, cool. So I get in the booth and I just go like. And I'm like trying to be Mick Jagger or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> going for a million personalities. I'm like, I feel a lift now. And everyone's like, whoa, keep going. And I'm like, like a child, every time you're close. And it starts to come out. And then it, and then he goes like, what about if we had a hook? And it kind of starts to become like a, I don't know, like a, a adults are talking strokes kind of thing. Like, din din din. Is that whatever, whatever what? stroke song that is? Um. It's kind of becomes, you know, when like, the Strokes would do the melody on the guitar line and then go in to do, and Julian would sing a verse and then they'd go back to the melody. But then I was, and I just went, what about if we sing this? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, can't keep holding my breath, God forbid you leave me like all the rest did. I'm in love again and tomorrow I'll be sad. And, and then it's just like, it's off. Oh, the, it, we're, like we're off to the races because I was like, the happiness of da 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 it feels like the breakfast club or something it's like starring jennifer aniston and fucking <laughs> brad pitt and fucking whoever but was all that just laying dormant in you and the, the that s- sample brought it out yeah it's mental it's like the thing about a session is it's like it, wah! you know yeah. what i mean it's like dead and then very much alive like is everybody on the same page when you are literally at a the end of a five or six hour day and the tone just changes? It's, dude, it, it just, you kind of have to be. That's yeah. what Chris says. My, my, one of my other producers, Chris Criotti, who, who basically produced this whole record now. Oh, he's I'm, from the East Coast. Yeah, he's... Gr- <laughs> so you probably know yeah, Chris yeah. from the... Uh, you know what I mean? So Chris ended up Sick. producing the whole record. And he's a fucking genius. And I love him. And it's, that's what he says for me. I'm, he's like, what's it like working with Dom? It's like, you're sitting there watching a tumbleweed... <laughs> And then you're in a Tesla, naught to 60 in two seconds. <laughs> and you have to just be ready. Yeah. It can be 12 hours in, it can be 12 minutes in. But it just kind of, I just go. Do you come into a session with anything planned or do you go blank slate? What's the I deal? may be coming with an idea. Like I may be coming with an idea or a feeling or an energy. But like, I don't know, it, it takes a guitar line or a word or a... A drum beat. Usually Chris has like a drum beat ready to, up, go. Ready to go. We'll know I'm coming in at two. I usually come in at three and we work till like six in the morning. They're the best hours. For me, I don't know why. We just... <laughs> what the fuck? But weird, yeah. <laughs> but he'll usually have a drum beat that might end up that being the drum beat, but we kind of... It just... It's all about... keep Like Chris always is all about keeping me inspired and energetic and kind of... He's like... He always like... He's like... Fight, I'm, like a, I'm like a mole burrowing <laughs> through the mud. <laughs> And you just got to kind of keep me fed with Red Bull, basically, you know what I mean? And keep me just like trying to find, because I'll just go like, we're turning right, boom, and then we're like, change the beat, and then go back to the beat, and then like, oh, whoa, that sounds good. 
So how do you know a song's done? When you feel it. It's like I it's like I feel it. I'm very I'm not I'm very much the the kind of the boss in terms of when I'm kind of go like that's amazing. Like the funeral there was such a fine line on the funeral because it kind of it, it started the main the v- vocal melody started like it, the v- melody's like I've been dancing at my funeral but it's it started so of, I've been dancing at my funeral and that it was it was a fine line between cheesy and cool uh, it's like man. fucking hell because I've been dancing at I sound like I'm fucking singing with the wiggles you know what I mean but like <laughs> I've been dancing sounds like fucking <laughs> the Ramones. Oh, baby, that's it up my... Oh, The Clash. I was like, do the one note. And um, and we were together doing that. You know what I mean? And it's like, we put two acoustics side by side. We put electrics panned. And then I'm going, okay, what about we do, we do the guitar line over the thing? And then it's like, and then it often, like, we add a load of shit. And like, it's muddy. It's... Uh, 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 and I'm like... Uh, uh, and that's what I do. And everyone freaks out when I'm like... Uh, you know what I mean? In the room. Like, <laughs> it's so mental. This is how a song is produced. I'd never tell people this. So this is cool. And um, it's like... Then I'll sit at the computer and it's often me taking bits away. Yeah. So you go really heavy and then so you, you strip. fuck loads of shit into it. Interesting. To find magic because that acoustic guitar part inspires this electric guitar part and then that inspires the synth part and that inspires the bass and that inspires the harmony and that inspires the vocal and then I put the vocal in because I need the fucking feeling of the there's a million instruments playing around me to give like that energy and then I'm like it's so cheesy take it all away and it's like that part on the left is right that's right up there that's right in the bass and that's right in the synth but maybe we should filter that and then maybe we'll, oh, we've got to make it sound more shit you know what I mean? And that's yeah. how a, a song kind of gets constructed in a young blood camp. It's often making it sound worse. But then it gets better. It's yeah. Because it's real. It's like it's like that elect that that feeling of an acoustic guitar, if there's two of them, you don't hear the personality in that one guitar take. Mm. And it's all about personality. Do you feel like all your songs sound like could hold their own acoustically? Yeah. I think so, because they start that way usually. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I think so. That's like a huge test. Because yeah, there's still right. a story you're telling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think like I love, I love, I love it when it works, and and kind of when you play the funeral. I've been, I've been. There's an acoustic version of that funeral, one. Waiting for you to arrive. It's really sad, but in the songs, like, I've been dancing, and the way, even the way I sung it then. I totally love about that about songs. It's yeah. like, like even tissues can't keep holding my breath. God forbid you happy. It's like can't keep holding my breath. God forbid you leave me like all the rest did. I'm in love again, and tomorrow I'll be sad. That's what the Cure did so well, and the Smiths, and that's where this album very much radiated towards the Cure, the Smiths, Joy Division, New Wave, and it's called Young Blood. It's called Young Blood. <laughs> yeah, pretty sick. Yeah. Pretty, pretty weird. Are, are you the boy in the black dress? <laughs> yeah. So, I, I shall I talk about that. I love that. I love that song. Yeah. It was like I remember a writer that I did Fleabag with, a, a guy I met called All Day. It was the like the craziest like East Coastest hippie you've ever met. It's like a guy who was born on the East Coast looks like a surfer, <laughs> and that's like you know what I mean. And he's just like. And he's like, he loves punk music. He loves Pearl Jam. He loves like, like that. He's very like hard to the pavement, but likes to write pop music. And he sends me this song. He sends me songs sometimes. And I don't really take pitch songs. I'm not, the thing about it is for a song for me, I've got to have written it or be a part of the process or be a part of the birth of it to be able to, because my songs are my soul. Yeah, it's an extension. You of know, you. What I mean, it's an extension of my energy. That's that's it. And the, and the thing for me is like, I love people around me. I love having like mates in the studio, even if I got to give them publishing. <laughs> I'm like, I love people around. It's me. energy. It's just fucking a, a feeling. Yeah, I don't yeah. give a shit. <laughs> people can get so dialed in. I'm like, oh yeah, man. There's like four writers on that. I'm like, yeah, and we had a great fucking night. Yeah. I'm down, and they deserve to be there, even if they were just vibing. <laughs> That's the way I like it yeah, to be. Yeah, they contributed something they contribute to, the to the energy of the feeling of the song. Yeah. So I'm down. That's what songwriting is to me. It's not like, 
well, I wrote that word and you wrote that. And it's like, bollocks. It's like, if you were there, fuck it. You birthed the song. But All Day sends me a song called The Boy in the Black Dress. And I love, and I was like, whoa, that title's crazy. Because he was like, I wrote this with you in mind. Because obviously, I, you know, I wear skirts yeah. and whatever. And I don't like to confine myself to fashion in terms of gender. Because that's just bollocks. But it was like, I've written this. And the song didn't really speak to me when he sent me it but the title did I was like yo can I take the title and obviously I'll cut you in on the song because you birthed the idea right so I walk into uh, up to Glendale have I told you I wrote it in Glendale the album no so oh fucking hell shit right like, over here like Glendale here in California yeah oh so basically after the uh, to cut a long story short I'm sorry this is going to be a nightmare to cut around because I'm like this is my head no. but it's fun <laughs> it's like I had every studio, because Weird went number one, so I had every studio ever available to me. <laughs> and then I'm like in the studio with like artists, right? And everyone's listening to your secrets. And people come in and like, oh, you're doing that rock thing. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, that was smart. That's a direct that was, quote. That was so perfect. I'm I, not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you who said that. It was like, oh, you're doing that rock thing. I'm like, fuck <laughs> off. You're doing the rock thing. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> you could probably throw out three names though. Probably you know what I mean? Yeah, literally, it's, it's fine. Like at home, you probably can tell who it was. Think about a massive producer in the world. <laughs> it works out Conway. Who said that? That's all you're getting. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, we have got to leave. We have got to leave now. I'm doing that rock thing. Okay, fine. <laughs> Go to Gle I'm like, right, fuck the studios. We're making it in a bedroom in Chris's house Sick. in Glendale. <laughs> Over the hill with the flies. <laughs> that's, you know what I'm saying? that's what I'm fucking doing. Because I was like, it needed that. I was in America and I missed the UK. And it needed that American UK sound. Yeah. It needed to be fucking UK as fuck. But I couldn't get back to the UK. So I'm going to go. Where am I going go? uh, to go? To a bedroom. That's Glendale. I'm going to go to a damp bedroom <laughs> in Glendale. <laughs> with flies. With flies. Oh, sick. And I'm down. I yeah. fucking loved it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm in, I'm in Glendale, <laughs> right? By the way, like a real recording studio, like delivers like producers and artists like freshly baked cookies. This is what I'm and... saying. I couldn't fucking handle that. It was literally <laughs> just like, yo, sir, do you want another sparkling water? I'm like, get out, <laughs> get out. I don't want berries. I want flies and Glendale and sweat and fucking the neighbor complaining Sick. and a gunshot in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking American man. And then uh, I'm like, I'm like, in in Glendale. So like, the boy in the black dress. The title has been given to me, and I go to Glendale. And I get to Glendale that day. Get down. Got a cold brew in my hand. So I just drink cold brew in America. Never do that at home. But whatever, <laughs> you guys like kings of the cold brew. Fucking got a cold brew to get wired to give me the inspiration. And I'm like, yo, I was listening to the, the Smiths came on, the Headmaster's Ritual. And before Morrissey was a dickhead, he was just the best lyricist ever. And then it all went a bit, t all went a bit fucking weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, and uh, I just thought it was fucking phenomenal in the Smiths. The way he told the stories. And I was like, I want to tell my life story in a song. And I want to call it The Boy in the Black Dress. And I was writing the record mostly with uh, Matty was involved, Chris Griotti, um, a guy called Jake Torrey, and um, a, a, a guy I met in a Thai restaurant who used to work in a Thai restaurant called Jordan Gable, right? <laughs> and I met this guy in a Thai restaurant who lives with Chris, and he used to work at you know Night Market in LA. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Fucking shout out Night Market. Yeah. Which one, Sunset or uh, Sunset? Venice? And he was working the Sunset one, but I love the Venice one too. Both. You know what I mean? Wherever you are, which side of town. <laughs> Shout out Naima. Better get free food after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I met him in a Thai fucking restaurant. And he was just like, I met him and I had a great conversation with him. And he's just an intellectual. Like, he reads Karl Marx and shit and talks about, like, Kurt Vonnegut. And I'm like, cool. Wow. So Sick. what does he contribute to this session? So, lyrically on this album, this kid sat across from me as an intellectual and went, am I impressed? <laughs> and... It was fucking great because I'm a performer. I love people in the studio. And he's like, you can say that better. 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 And I'm like, I'm like, 
<laughs> fuck you yeah I can and then he'll throw a mental word out there and like this is what I always say to him he's so uncensored and unfiltered it's beautiful because he'll just be like what about this and I'm like that is the worst idea I've ever heard but then he'll say like what about this and I'm like oh my god that's fucking genius yeah, what the f it takes the shitty to get you know, to the great that's what I'm saying but he's looking at me yeah. and the way the way on this album he was brilliantly beautiful was I was writing opposite someone who would critique my words when this album came out. You know what I mean? He reads books, he's intellectual, he, see, he cuts through the bullshit, and he pushed me to really, lyrically, be my best on this album. And it was beautiful. I remember with the boy in the black dress, I was like, right, I'm gonna tell my story. And I wanna talk about like the inner child kind of going like, was it all worth it? Was it worth the pain? Was it worth the bullshit that came with it to be the boy in the black dress? Was it worth it? And kind of speak metaphorically about that song. And it, and it started, I just was like, I'm gonna tell the story about each moment in my life when something significant happened. The first time I got punched in the face. The first time I got a, a teacher told me that nail polish was for girls the first time i had casual sex the first time i experienced hate like never before and the moment i came down from that horrible cloud you know what i mean and it's almost like those moments in life when your brain registers it you can't quite feel it it's like has it, have you ever been hit in the face before mm -hmm. you know what i mean you get that thing where your brain knows something mental has happened but you yeah. face process you can't process it but it make it makes you grow up a lot it makes you grow up a year in a, in, in a second as an animal as a person and i remember like me and jordan were literally at the side running around this bungalow just writing this story and he's like no you can say that better make me feel it like it was like a fucking drama exercise you know what i mean he's like we're weirdos but he's brilliant because he's like like it's a fucking exercise yeah. he's like you can say that better put me there put me in that fucking thing what did it feel like and it's like well and i'm like well masculinity seems to hurt a lot the first time you feel it in your jaw and he's like yes and i'm like fuck and, and, and it's like this this thing where someone's prodding me because I kick the bear <laughs> but, the, but the bear's kicking me <laughs> you were the and I'm like ah you know what I mean for the first time and it was cool as fuck to meet a writer because Chris isn't like that Chris is a musician <laughs> who pu pulls everything together and keeps me energised and keeps me burrowing Matty Matty Schwartz fundamentally fa helped me find my soul as a, as a writer and then this new kid on the block comes in and he's like testing my words and like the way I speak. So I've got a group of people around me basically beating the shit out of but me. But that's how you get better. To get me, to make me put on my soul out and yes. to get to obtain this feeling. And I think like with this record, like, I don't know. I think if you wanna, it's like a podcast about me in the way that it's, I wanted to make it a universal idea of a feeling and a spirit you know what i mean it's like a lot of the little words like i've been dancing at my funeral i can't keep holding my breath god forbid you leave me like all the rest that i'm in love again but tomorrow i'll be sad i wish i could let go of all the memories i feel like i'm going mad it's those statements that are so i that you can put that in your mouth and go i like the bet the loudest moment in the show at the minute is nobody came what a shame 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 because the part in the funeral, it's like everyone feels like no one's going to turn up to the funeral, but wait, I'm around 10,000 people. They're all here. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that. It's that. Uh, that's what I, that's coming out of this album. And as I say, I think a lot of people expected me to make like a pop punk record on this album. And I love that. And I love that time when we, you know what I mean, when that happened. But I needed to push somewhere else because the spirit of what I was feeling was not within that it was it within this melancholy happy sad british album
Are those the boxes you put it in, or do you know, just not? It, it, I don't, yeah, well, why shouldn't be put, I even boxing that? You know what I mean? It was like it's like everyone kind of was like, you should make this record, you should do this, and it was like when I step up to the mic, I record and I put on tape you, me, and what comes out, and that's what it is, and that's what it is, and it's like, and that's the way I think as an artist, you kind of you you kind of guilt free if people love it or don't. I'm like, well, I, I can't. I, put the me on a plate and if you I can't really do much about it if you don't love me you know what I mean I'm not acting I'm not posing I'm not pretending it's really real and really raw and if you don't look you don't like it you don't you're not supposed to like that part of me in that moment and that's it like with albums like I want my show to be a series of moments in life 21st century liability part of the set is that part of the set and then it bleeds into the weird part of the set and then it bleeds into the young blood part I of the set that. and what on because you don't want to see a show and see the same song 13 times mm -hmm. you go see gaga or bowie or green day like a span or yeah. my chem a span of albums or even 21 pilots a span of albums a span of moments a span of feelings and you're engaged for two hours it's like, oh my god that album made me feel like that for that part of my life and then that triggered that and I hated that album but I loved that song off this album and that's the, what, the journey I want because again it's not about the music it's about the communication and it's about the feeling that you get from it you know what I mean and the feeling you get from a show by the way that communicate the, the community comes to life international is fuck tour is happening this fall yeah and then you have another tour planned for 2023 that's yeah, so even bigger what was cool is like with it, like, I'm coming across America to do in-stores. <laughs> You're going to do I'm it at, at record stores? Yeah, I'm hit, like, nine nine cities in four days. That's awesome. It's going to be crazy because it's like, it's like, I want to be with them. I want to celebrate the album with them. I hate that the, the age of, my album's out, go get it on Spotify, no. is here. That's not going to work for me. It's, I need to pass you it. I need to just... We're going to go into a record store with that holds 300 people and do three shifts <laughs> of each one. <laughs> and, or up. even if, if 1,200 people, if 2,000, I'll be there all day playing the album <laughs> acoustically and you kind of get ferried in and out. You know what I mean? And that's the vibe because I'm like, the, the next tour we're about to announce is the biggest tour I could even possibly imagine. Like what? The, it's like a what the fuck tour. Like I'm kind of not ready for it yet, so I've got to, I've got to see you in small venues yeah. before we kind of go there. Why is that important for I just, you? I just, I just like because that's what Youngblood's about. Yeah. That's what it's always been about. It's like it's the, it's how do I make my email for my fans? <laughs> how do I personify that? Because it's, it's. I want to make an arena feel like a punk club, still. It's hard to do though, isn't it? That's what I'm saying, but the the way we do that is go to a punk club as well as an arena. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like you get two experiences. Yeah, go to a record store. Yeah, it's like let's get compact, let's go to the record store, let me sign it, let me look you in the face, let me wave at you, let me touch you, let me do that, and then like come and see a mental spectacle that resembles the album in a massive venue. You know what I mean? You gotta listen to this album, by the way. It's called Young Blood. Link in the description below. Listen to it on Amazon Music. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, Emperor is not on the album, is it? So it's it got it's a last minute edition, so it's not oh. gonna be on the vinyl. So basically I've had that song since I was seventeen. Oh wow. Right. That's... And then people called me up and go, Yo, you know that little network called the SPN? <laughs> they wanna use it as the college football anthem and I'm like oh cool man that's cool and everyone's like and when I come to America everyone's like that's really fucking big it's fucking massive you know what I mean? I'm like, oh. it's fucking huge I'm, I'm like oh <laughs> sick man because obviously yeah. like I, I I knew I I and what has been so insane is I'm becoming a football fan like by just being at the stadiums like the, the energy yeah, it's and crazy. the community of this shit I'm like whoa oh. I'm all about this bro there's nothing on every level high school uh, college, profet uh, NFL, like, dude, the community is so thick, dude, and like, unwavering. This is so sick, and I'm like, it's 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 cool. So I think, like, as I say, I think I'll probably put it on the album digitally because it makes sense. But it's, <coughs> we kind of you have to deliver the album for the vinyl. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, I, I think kind of. 
kind of fits because it's just like the angry bit of young blood for a, a split second. Dude, you got to go to these college towns before I'm there. You're going to experience it during a football. Oh, it's insane. Dude, I literally, I'm like, yo, frat houses. Oh. I want to play. You know, no. Oh my god, how I, sick would that I, be? I, I want to go with you just to Dude, watch. I would love that. I would just want to be like. You want to do that? That's the thing, and it's and it's been so cool to kind of see the reaction to it already. Everyone's like, yo, this goes so well with the season. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa, that's really humbling because it's like, I wanted that song to be a riot. It's about an unfiltered explosion of energy. And that's a football match. It's like, whoa, go. You know what I mean? It's so cool. But how did it end up on a hard drive? Like, the, just so everybody like knows. seven years old. Yeah, just, just so you know how it works. Like, it's sitting on a hard drive, and your people at your publishing company yeah. have, like, just, like, something that sits around for pitch or sync, and Dude, somehow... it was insane. It was, like, so basically, uh, Interscope like, Records, like, when I signed to Interscope, I had, like, 10,000 followers. And I remember, like, I... To call a long story short, the UK wouldn't sign me anywhere, and we were big in, like, the Netherlands and Australia. That was it. Nowhere else knew that who the fuck I was. It was like the Netherlands and Australia was like sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then someone in LA heard me on Dutch radio and said, Will you come and play school night? Oh my god, yeah, which is Bardo. Yeah. And it was um it was a guy called Grant Owens on We Found New Music. Yeah. It was like that. And at basically one of my managers lived in New York, Deck, and I, and no one wanted to sign me in the UK, so I was so depressed. I was like, it's not going to happen. I'm going to be big in the Netherlands <laughs> and Australia <laughs> and nowhere else. And I was like, oh, fuck it. Because the, ne the Netherlands is sick, and so is Australia. It's like best shows ever. Still some of the best shows we play, because they, like, they got it first. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Deck was like, why don't you come to New York, and we'll do some writing sessions, and like, because the management were like, we're going to have to pick this kid up. It's like, no one wants to sign him. Like, it's bad. <laughs> so then a, a kid, this guy called Emmett Power, who was working through deck, Morel, who was my manager, uh, was uh, was kind of like their intern, basically. And he came to New York with me. And I was going to write some songs with a guy called Dave Katz, yeah. who did, like, Good Charlotte and, like, all the <laughs> pop punk shit. But his studio was inside the Universal building, Right. And I ended up writing Doctor Doctor, Die for the Hype, Medication, so much of the first album with 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 Dave yeah, on that studio on Fifty Seventh Street. Yeah, literally in inside the, the yeah. Universal Building, right? So Sick. Emmett pretends to be my drummer because you get given these passes in the Universal Building that like like kind of expire after twelve hours. It's like really high security, you know what I mean? So I was like, pretend to be my drummer, and he rides the elevator. And he's Irish all day. And start speaking to A and R's, be like, "Yo, heard of this young blood kid? Yeah, fucking blow your tits off on floor four. <laughs> and he starts to bullshit these A and R's, right? You know what fucking A and R's like? Everyone yeah. starts talking like, "Yeah, I fucking heard this new thing. What have you got?" And everyone starts talking <laughs> bollocks to each other, and everyone's chatting shit on the East Coast. And then Emmett gets a meeting at Republic, <laughs> and then at Island. And then want to hear about it. And then everyone hears about it. And I come to the West Coast to play school night. And then every label in town's at the, at the, at the Bardo. And I'm like, holy shit. And then I meet John Janik. And he's awesome. And then I meet Neil Jacobson and John Janik. And every, every label's like, we're going to make you a star and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, ah! Like, you know what I mean? Just like emo kid from the north of England. Like whoa this is like the 70s man like you know what i mean after the show and I, <laughs> I took a meeting with john and neil and they were just like and john was just like yo i've really just quiet and was like i've done this before i don't want to change you i don't want to put you with anyone because everyone's like we'll get you on this feature we'll put you on and he's like i don't want to put you with anyone i want to just pay for you to go on the road <laughs> and i want you to just do your thing and keep connecting because i've told him my idea and no one knew what it was yet but like I, there was a, I was showing him videos from like the Netherlands and Australia, Australia and he was like listen the connection you have with these people and I was telling him about my ideas I was like I just want to build a community I want to find people and I want to make them feel less alone and blah 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 he was like I just want to put you on the road and I want to give you a little bit of help and I was like whoa and then 
I, 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 I said, but he says, you got uh, yeah, only, I want to sign you on one condition. I was like, what? He's like, you got to play a show for the company on Friday. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? You got to play a show for the whole of Interscope Records? Like, bro, I'm like big in the Netherlands <laughs> and, and Australia. <laughs> and now I'm playing for the whole of Interscope Records on Friday. I've got like 60 d quid in my account. You know what I mean? Like, I've got 60 pounds and like, talking about contracts and record deals. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Going in the record late, but I should probably shouldn't tell this because Interscope is like a story. I played the place called the Tom Tom Club, which Jimmy, uh, um, Jimmy, uh, when he when he ran, um, w when he ran Interscope, yeah. made this place where you would, he would, you would put acts on, you signed. And, and John was like, yo, he kind of, what he sensed like a scene a rock scene was going to come back because it had been away for so long and he said i want to kind of introduce you to the company before you leave again because i'm going back to europe and you know what i mean he wanted everyone to see me play because he wanted to see them to see what he saw at the at the bardo mm -hmm. and i remember i played the gig and we just went it was just a riot and then i i left stage i i left the stage but there was a curtain there, and that door was the door to the dressing room, and that door was the door to leave. And I went at the wrong thing. So I stood by the door like, fuck, I can't walk back out and then walk thing. <laughs> so then I ended up meeting it, shaking everyone's hand oh, who came to the who came to the thing. But it was almost like a sign, like, thank you for doing that. Cause I got to meet everyone at the label personally. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited. And they're invested in you now. And, and it was sick. And then I met a guy called Dave Neiman, who was head of sports at Interscope. <laughs> and I was playing the Emperor in the show. I was playing that song before it had even come out. That's and crazy. And he was like, I love that song. And I've all, every kind of opportunity has been like Emperor. And people have turned it down. But then it was like, college, like, apparently, like, he was just like, yo, this could be crazy for college football. And ESPN was like, we love it. And then it was like, the Emperor finally found its place and it's the perfect place for it <laughs> and it's crazy it's yeah. like a riot please listen to young blood's <laughs> album i beg you i beg you and I, I i thank you very much for giving us your time and energy dude today, i loved dude. it honestly thank you so uh, i just couldn't wait to see you again this is me so it's mutual. like i was like it's been so crazy god i'm like it gives me goosebumps like you you do something special and it's attached to the most genuine roots and the motivation couldn't be more pure and God, fuck, you speak for a generation. Like, the reason why it worked back then is because there was tens of millions of kids, myself included, who were, again, being fed cookie-cutter bullshit, waiting for somebody to break that mold and speak for the darker side yeah. of what looms over everybody's reality. Completely. You carry the rock and roll torch beautifully. So thank you. Thank you, Zach, man. I appreciate Thank you, you, brother. Thank you, D man. Please listen to the album, Killer. Yeah, I, I, I hope, I hope you love it, and yeah, I just, I think it's gonna be crazy, and I'll see you on tour in America, and I'll see you at some rural in store <laughs> <laughs> very soon. Let's cause some trouble. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Young blood, everybody. Thank Woo! you.